G'day guys, I'm Tim Tam here. Today we're going to learn about the motion blur with an octane render for Maya. Um, as you can see, I have a scene rendered here with a little bit of an animation. Um, it's pretty quick in terms of the uh, frames per second, and it can give off it gives off some really good motion blur. So when we to go to the motion blur settings, we go to the rendering settings, go to octane render settings. And then we go to the motion blur option. Um, and as you can see, there is none, subframe, and internal. We're going to learn about subframe uh, right now. Now, with subframe, we have MB shutter percentage of frame, and we have number of MB time samples. Now, um, it's best to give a good representation of these settings to give a good um, feel for it. So, here we have the, uh, where is it, suffering? So here we have a test of 10% at 100 frames, at, uh, at 100 samples. Um, as you can see, the default that we have now is very blocky, very rigid, and it shows a lot of artifacts. So what happens if we were to bring this slider up? Uh, let's bring it to 50% at 100 samples. And so doing this, we found out that there is quite a bit of noise. So obviously we have to bring the samples up. So at... 100% uh, at 2,000, I mean, out of 1,000 samples, we can see that it becomes a lot more smoother and a lot more shinier, I guess. Um, with 100% at 2,000 samples, it gets even more precise and clean. So there's a clear difference between... Um, so there's uh, there is a correlation between putting the number of time samples up along with your overall max samples. Uh, the more you put it up here, the more you have to put it up here because obviously it gets way more noisier with putting 50%, not 10 but 50, with only 100 frames. I mean it looks like garbage, look at this. Now with the sub now on the next option we have a internal motion blur effect. This one is a bit tricky, um, but I have an example to show. Um, here we have the MP direction, uh, after, before and somatic. I'm going to show you the somatic. Uh, so I have a uh, animation here that shows what it does. So for every motion that it takes, depending on what you have, it merges uh, two to three frames and it merges them together to get the motion blur effects without using the universal method of the motion blur. However, in so doing, if we look at the animation itself, it goes from 60 to 63 to 66 to 69. This is because it merges these frames together. Um, also, while doing this, um, you have to keep in mind that if you want to use the internal option, you're going to have to change all of the objects to movable and the animation to movable proxies. And if you do get an error saying that there needs to be uh, X amount of frames before or after, obviously you can't break these two options and put new ones in, but you're going to have to um, keep it going up until you uh, finish that threshold of finding um, how many more frames that it can take. Depending on the animation that you have um, and the amount of um, shutter that you want, it requires a lot of um, twitching and fiddling to get the right options, um, but it does work very well 
um, in terms of this, and it can get some really nice effects for it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.